the American criminal justice system holds 2.3 million people in 1,833 state prisons, 110 federal prisons, 1,772 juvenile correction facilities, 3,134 local jails, 218 immigration detention facilities, and 80 Indian country jails, as well as in military prisons, civil commitment centers, state psychiatric hospitals, and prisons in the U.S. territories. The U.S. leads the world in the number of incarcerated human beings. These are real people with real lives, people with hope, people working on redemption, people with an untapped human capacity for good. We would like to address some of the lessons learned from yoga in prison including the development of a deep spiritual practice as we learn some applicable lessons from those who are incarcerated. Lessons that we can take with us and use in our everyday lives. Welcome men to uh, Finding Yourself in Prison, Life Lessons learning, Learned Leading a Spiritual Life in a Complicated World. Uh, I would like to uh, state our purpose right up front. Uh, our purpose is to take a look at the healing power of yoga. And uh, the four of us have shared a, a common experience uh, at uh, Graterford Prison, which is outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we all experienced a yoga teacher training, a 200 hour teacher training program. Uh, put on in a maximum security prison. So we're, our time together, we're gonna to use the council format. Um, so I'm gonna invite uh, each of us to do just a brief check-in to state uh, your name, where you're from, and uh, you know a brief statement about where you're at right now. So I will model that. Uh, my name is Jim O'Neill. I live in Westchester, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. Um, I've been practicing yoga for about 17 years. I um, uh, was practicing for 10 years before I started volunteering for Transformation Yoga Project um, and actually received my training as a yoga teacher um, in the Greaterford Prison with several other uh, incarcerated men. Um, and uh, I'm feeling a little tightness in my chest as we uh, start this process. Um, and with that, I'm in. Um, so um, Matt, I invite you to, to check in. Hello, my name is Matthew Engler. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I took part in the yoga teacher training at Graterford. I was incarcerated at the time, uh, feeling really good. Things have been going pretty well for me. Uh, Thank you. And Frank, I uh, invite you to check in. Hello, my name is Frank Junta. I live in Westchester, Pennsylvania as well. And Jim and I were the two students outside of the prison who took part in the classes at Greaterford. Over six months being in that time in the prison with Jim was a great experience. I've been involved with yoga for about 18 years, and I'm probably the oldest member of this group, which brings me uh, a great amount of satisfaction and strength as I become older, how yoga has affected my life. So I'm excited about this presentation today and hope that it all goes well. Mike, Hi. check in. Sure. Hi there. Uh, my name is Mike Huggins, and I'm the founder uh, of the Transformation Yoga Project back in 2012-2013. Uh, formerly, uh, I spent most of my career in the business world and holding uh, several relatively high-level executive jobs, uh, and I found myself in prison uh, for a period of time related to <clears throat> work I was doing um, and the world 
of yoga, which I had started practicing about 16 years ago. Um, and the criminal justice system, those two worlds came together and uh, truly in a life tran transform trans transformational way. Uh, and so I'm feeling grateful that you decided to join us uh, for this present this talk or to talk about the, the, what it is and, and uh, why is it transformational and what lessons we can learn as we try to live our best lives. So I'm uh, extremely grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for checking in. So uh, I'm going to uh, spend our time with several prompts. Uh, and I, I invite us to respond, uh, to speak from the heart, uh, to listen to each other from the heart, to be spontaneous and authentic, and um, to be brief of expression. So our first prompt is, uh, what really stands out uh, for you? of the uh, time that we spent together in our yoga teacher training at uh, Graterford Prison. Um, so um, Matt, uh, I'm gonna call on you first uh, to respond to that prompt. So what stands out to me about our, our yoga teacher training, I mean, to me would be the relationships I, I, I made with you guys, with a couple other members of the group, and, uh, and uh, that, took, that took part two. That, that's, that, to me, is what stands out. I had a fairly uh, strong practice, uh, meditation practice, prior to uh, becoming involved with the TYP, and, uh, you know, th that's what stands out to me. Thank you. Uh, Frank, what stands out for you? I think uh, the length of time being involved in a uh, prison with other men uh, for the length of time that we were there, um, getting to know them as equals, and also the positive impression that all of them made on me and I was making on them. And so there was a lot of exchange on a very good level. Uh, and just being in that prison on a weekly basis made such an effect on my life. Thank you. Mike, what stands out for you? Well, look, I think I've been on, on both sides of this equation, if you will. I, the thing that stands out to me is this concept of, of dual thinking where we, we, um, we tend to think in, in terms that uh, like don't do the don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Those kinds of cliches uh, and generalizations we make, but but when we get down to an individual level, we find that we share so much in common, and I think that's exactly what uh, Frank is alluding to: is that we're all the same. We have the same concerns. We have the same worries about life. We want to have some type of contribution, and so for me, <clears throat> getting to know um, those men. Uh, and to, to watch them embrace these tools is, is they, they're dealing with some really significant challenges. I think went a long way to, to try to break down the stereotypes of how we might um, view things from 30 foot thousand, 30 foot thousand view of the criminal justice system versus the individuals who are really working to better themselves and to, to deal with very challenging uh, circumstances. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just share my, uh, what stands out for me was really the shock uh, of entering a prison for the first time. Um, uh, the first time I walked down that long corridor at Graterford Prison uh, and seeing literally thousands of men uh, walking the, the halls um, as we made our way all the way down to the other end of the prison to conduct the uh, yoga teacher training or the yoga classes. Um, uh, and we, I taught the yoga classes there for a, a period of time before the yoga teacher training. Um, so I was uh, volunteering teaching without being a certified yoga teacher. Um, but uh, uh, like some of you have shared, it was the relationships that I developed over the time there that really stand out. Um, just how amazing these men were. Uh, and uh, it really does flip your perception uh, of what it's like to be in prison. You know, these were real men uh, 
uh, who were willing to open up their, their hearts and share what's going on. And uh, uh, so that's what really stood out for me. Uh, so I'll move on to a, a second prompt, uh, just to help us dive a little deeper into this uh, experience that we shared. Uh, so I'm going to invite you to uh, maybe go a little deeper and share uh, a physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual experience of your yoga teacher training uh, at Greaterford. So again, Matt, I'll, uh, I'll call on you first. I mean, I guess my, you know, in terms of how I integrated this teacher training into my spiritual practice, I would say it was be less spiritual and more practical in the sense that uh, I had a strong meditation practice prior to becoming involved. And uh, that's an inward, that's an inward journey. And uh, I became adept at dealing within and then through this yoga teacher training and then really the, the time after, then that was kind of my time to do work out outwardly with relationships with people. So I would say that for me, that would be probably that, you know what I mean? Kind of how that fit into my life in a particular way. You know what I mean? I kind of realized that I needed to adjust. I was going to get out in a couple of years. I needed to adjust maybe how I dealt with others, learn new ways and, uh, that was one of the, you know, engaging with people in that, in that setting definitely kind of set that out for me. Thank you. Frank, do you want to uh, respond to that prompt? Yes. Um, I think that the um, avenue of yoga uh, exposing me to the men in that class brought out um, all the uh, concentration and the meditation of all of us doing that practice together made me feel uh, so much gratitude and respect and love for that class and how unbelievable our relationships grew uh, that made that impression on me on a, da on a daily basis, basis. I went from fear to freedom. When I first went there, like you said, Jim, it was such a, a fearful experience. And as the weeks went by, I was just anticipating, so excited about going there and the, the freedom that yoga gave us as well as the men in the class was a uh, beautiful experience. And it's just, uh, it was really heartfelt and uh, spiritual on so many levels. And I felt that the Lord really uh, sent me there for a lot of reasons and the give and take of the whole experience was just uh, wonderful. Thanks, Frank. Uh, Mike, do you want to respond to that prompt? Yeah, and you might have to cut me off, Jim, because this is one I have a very strong feelings on, so uh, I won't take it personally. <laughs> but what I would say is this, that when we first went in there, and in even my experience when I, when I was incarcerated, uh, to, to get people to be interested in yoga, um, we started out really promoting the physical practice of it. And, uh, you know, a lot of the men were, were big weightlifters and strong guys and just into the fitness side of it. So that was our, our angle, if you will. <clears throat> but what really impressed me was, was relatively quickly, they started to understand that, oh, okay, so the physical aspect of this practice is a gateway for going inward. And uh, in order to go inward, you have to, um, at least in that environment, you have to set yourself up to be vulnerable. And you, mm. look, we know that prison is not an easy place to be vulnerable. Um, mm. And to, to watch those men uh, in that group to become vulnerable and watch them do that in, inward work was uh, really amazing. So we could see that shift over time from, from the practice where they were uh, very concerned about alignment and this pose or that pose and whether they could do a handstand and all that to, to over time uh, being more focused on um, the, the connection, the mind body connection through the breathing and the relaxation aspect of that and, and to, to let go. Um, so for me, that, that it's, it's clearly what stands out. And, and I think, um, you know, part of my theory of all this and, and having been involved for so long is that the prison experience 
kind of puts things into perspective, into a black and white perspective, uh, meaning mm -hmm. that you have to make a choice every day how you want to live. And because the system um, can do, can, can wear you down over time. And I only had a short period of time there. But I, I feel like yoga uh, practice as these men embrace and as we also experience can provide that tool so we can make that decision every day that I can use this as an opportunity to learn and to grow as a man and to explore things deeper than I otherwise may not have done. Uh, you know, Matt uh, referred that he had a, a meditation practice before we all met and I think that served him well because he had a nice perspective on things and I think uh, over time, and I won't speak for you Matt, but I think over time he saw those two coming together, you know, adding the yoga piece can actually deepen his meditation practice. Um, and uh, anyway, so that stands out to me as being uh, just a wonderful uh, part. And as Frank, I had said that uh, the give and take of that, I mean, we, we received way more than we, we offered to those men. I think that would yes. probably be the, the takeaway. Yes. For me. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to respond to the prompt myself. Um, that's, and Mike, you may need to cut me off because I might go, <laughs> go on too. Um, uh, the, the, the emotional piece for me uh, started to evolve from, like you said, Frank, from fear in the beginning to uh, uh, the vulnerability and experience of just, you know, sitting and talking with uh, each mm -hmm. man going through the process. Um, mm -hmm. I can remember one individual, uh, I won't say his name, but we might get a smile out of somebody uh, who said that he entered uh, the prison as like a, a jailhouse Marine and we're always getting in trouble. And uh, then he became transformed into a jailhouse monk. Um, and, uh, uh, that brings a smile to my face, but it really says a lot, I think, of the, uh, the transformation that can happen in the uh, prison experience. Um, and then uh, uh, I'm getting chills now just thinking of um, uh, when we were asked to lead the meditation piece at the end, or what we call Shavasana at the end of a, a practice, and each man sort of took a turn doing that. And just the depth of... Um, um, of wisdom and, and spirituality that these men expressed just really blew, blew me away. And, um, uh, and finally, uh, one experience I think that was rather emotional for me uh, was our, uh, uh, we, we conducted a uh, graduation ceremony in this big gym uh, where we did a lot of our yoga practice. And uh, it wasn't real conducive to uh, what I would call a uh, meditative experience because there were big fans blowing. It was hard to hear each other. Uh, you, if you're laying up, looking up at the ceiling, there you can see the sky through the cracks in the in the ceiling, uh, um, and it was hot, hot, hot uh, uh, sometimes. So, uh, but we had a graduation ceremony where we gathered in circle and ask each uh, person present to share their story. And uh, I was incredibly moved uh, by uh, one man who got up and said he wanted to play some music um, as he told his story. And uh, the music that he played was Andre Day's uh, Rise Up. And uh, so I, I followed this man uh, after it was my turn to sort of uh, to speak and I was, I had no words. Um, and um, so I was just moved to, um, I asked him if he could turn the, the music on again. And I allowed that music and the practice of yoga uh, uh, to speak for me. I allowed my body to speak, to express what I was feeling. And uh, for me, uh, it was a very emotional experience because it was a spontaneous expression. Uh, it was just a four minute song. So I did a four minute yoga practice uh, there in the center of our circle. Um, and it brought me to tears and several other uh, of us sitting in circle uh, in tears. But I think it just captured um, a depth of, of reaching in uh, inside uh, myself and our, our collective selves. 
Um, so that's for me is what uh, uh, a very emotional experience for me that that we that I shared in in the circle we sat in together. It's beautiful. So I'll move on to uh, uh, another prompt. Um, So, so how has this, this common experience that we shared affected your life today? What is yours to do now? So Matt, I'll throw that at you. Okay, uh, well, so I was in prison when I took this training and uh, a couple years later I got out and pretty much through, I would say that, and uh, I've been out for now a year and a couple of months and it's been amazing. And pretty much all that has been through my involvement with the, this yoga teacher training, these men and women. And, uh, and, you know, I would say that the blessing that my life is right now is certainly due to the, to, to, to what I learned in those practice in, in, in that, uh, in that teacher training. I'm a yoga teacher. I, ch I teach, uh, yoga, meditation, fitness, that's what I do for a living, um, provides a pretty good life. I'm very happy. You know, I can't sum it up really much more than that. Thanks, Matt. Frank? Well, um, I was in the retirement stage of my life when I was involved with the yoga and transformation yoga project. And the whole prison experience was such a great extension of making me much more empathetic, understanding, forgiving, hopeful, and respectful for all incarcerated people in our judicial correction and rehabilitation system. And I just have to say that um, the nine men that were in that class, uh, I remember one of our classes one day, we had to write words of what each man represented. And this has really uh, stuck with me in my life as I go through it in these later years. So such ideas as words of wisdom, general introspection, amazing men of thought, focused strength, fine detail, quiet focus, expressive excitement, and smiling heart. These, these ideas, these feelings um, really become a part of me and how I try to live my life every day as I work within my family, within my friends, and within my community. So I just can't uh, express how much greater. I was a school teacher for many years. I uh, ran a family business for many years, uh, community oriented. But this experience just brought such depth into my soul and my heart. And um, totally grateful. Totally grateful. Thanks, Frank. Mike, do you want to respond to that prompt? No, what is yours to do now? Well, I think the, the, the thing that jumps out at me first is, is this idea that uh, where you are doesn't define who you are. And, uh, mm. I, and I say that in a really general way, because I think that affected me prior to my own personal prison experience, because when I was uh, in the business world as an executive, um, I kind of was defined by my job, you know, by that. Mm. And that was, a, that was just a false uh, thing. Uh, and then when you have that taken away, you can see that, that it's, it's, it can be pretty devastating. And the same is true for, for those men and women who are uh, trapped within this unjust uh, justice system. Um, you know, we have a tendency to, to, to define ourselves by where we are, particularly if you're there for a long time. And I think um, if we can uh, not define ourselves by where we are, it's just, it's a stop on our journey. And you know, all of these, um, experiences that we've had, you know, good or bad, and, and for many, they've been really challenging, traumatic experiences. Um, they help shape who we are, uh, and they can, at some point in time, if we are open to it and vulnerable and do the work, they can become part of our wisdom, makes, makes us unique. So for me, um, this experience has, has helped me to, to sort of tame my ego, knowing that uh, there's, there's thousands of, uh, hundreds of thousands of men and women who are 
um, struggling or, or working to, to get through that. And, and the last thing I'll say about that, Jim, from where I go from here is that, that this clearly was the impetus for starting the, this organization, the Transformation Yoga Project. It's been a, a lifesaver for me personally. Um, but it's also, uh, I'm, I'm starting to embrace this idea of impermanence. <clears throat> and so now fast forward, we've been around, you know, I guess I've been doing this formally with the, starting the organization for about eight years now. Um, and I think it's time for a transition for new leadership too, so that those who are more impacted by what we do as an organization have a better say of how we go forward. And I'm really at peace with that. I'm actually very excited about that to, to, to see how we can uh, <clears throat> uh, reimagine ourselves in the era of COVID and particularly for those who are incarcerated where they have nothing right now. I mean, that's the piece that I don't know people really focus on. You know, they're in lockdown situations with, with little freedoms that they had, they're taken away um, during this period of time. <clears throat> so I, I feel strongly that uh, we need to, to bring in impacted leadership, those who have this experience to reimagine how we can serve in this environment that's that's rapidly changing. And that's that's what I'm focused on right now, personally. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll respond, you know, what's <laughs> mine to do now? Um, uh, you know, it has been sort of a, a, a real void since COVID hit, uh, which prevented me uh, to go into the prison uh, and do what I was, had been doing really <laughs> the past, you know, seven, seven years or so. Um, so uh, this time of transition, uh, it's, I'm trying to discern what is mine to do now. And uh, uh, I've started to, uh, you know, offer uh, yoga classes online. And actually, uh, uh, Frank and Mike and myself have done some uh, online yoga classes just together uh, a couple times a week. Uh, and uh, we started to invite other men to join us. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so that may be something uh, as we continue in this uh, period of, uh, of lockdown or isolation uh, to continue to uh, invite men to just uh, join in a yoga practice with us. So something as simple as, you know, one or two men uh, joining uh, a practice. Um, but I've also started to explore, um, uh, there's an African-American woman who's written a book. Uh, she's a yoga teacher. Uh, her name is Michelle, Michelle Johnson, who's written a book about really challenging uh, the yoga community to take a serious look at um, social structures and systemic uh, racism built into uh, our culture. Um, so I'm exploring what that is. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, as I focus on um, the physical alignment uh, in my yoga posture or in a, a class that I may be teaching, uh, how does that affect the uh, social misalignment uh, that uh, we're all experiencing? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm exploring that. And I think there's um, something for me to do. I'm not really sure what that is at this point, but um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, exploring that. and. Uh, uh, it helps to share that, to speak that out uh, in public, so to speak, which uh, puts it out in the universe. And then I sort of take that next small step to move forward uh, in that process. So I think that's what is, is mine to do um, at this time. Um, so um, I'll open it up. Uh, if there's any, uh, anything else that anyone uh, would like to add, uh, before we bring it to close. Well, Jim, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind bringing uh, up a prompt question, if that's, if that's okay. Fantastic. So this has been an awesome discussion and I appreciate uh, the conversation back and forth. And um, so we started out talking about that, this yoga practice and yoga for incarcerated men and women. Um, we haven't talked at all about poses, right? So, um, so what does this have to do, like, with yoga, I mean, what? Why do we? Even, what are these poses? Why are is you, are poses part of yoga? What is yoga then? If we're talking about all this other inward work, <clears throat> when when most of us think about yoga as physical uh, physical practices, I'm just curious what everyone's thoughts are on that. Maybe Matt, uh, why don't you jump in first on that? Well, I mean, you know, 
to me, I guess the poses are secondary. It's it's how you then, be, you know, have what I mean. I, well, I mean, for me, I guess the poses are secondary. I guess it's it's where my head is when I'm in the poses. What's you know what I mean is is my primary kind of focus at you know at this point since you about the poses. You know, that's kind of where my practice is right now. Great, thank you, Frank. Um. Well, the poses for me uh, really benefit the, my body and my my soul at all, all at the same time because the different poses, as you go through them and you hold the poses, um, there's a certain amount of physical release. There's a certain amount of uh, strengthening there, and and really it shows your strength and your weaknesses as you do the poses, which kind of can align that with life. And so and when we go through a practice, at the end of the practice, when we just sit there and meditate, our bodies just feel so good and they feel so um, released, so open, so accepting. And I think that's the beautiful part of going through the, the, the poses, all of them, and what it does, how it transfers into the mental state, your mental state has always uh, impressed me. And I remember when uh, I used to be a big runner and all that kind of thing. And when I couldn't do that anymore, someone said, why don't you just try yoga? And I thought, what is yoga going to do for me? I had no idea until I started doing the practice, uh, actually uh, with uh, Mike and Colleen and uh, a number of other people and how that was so rewarding for me on a physical level, but it also went into the mental and spiritual level. So it was all encompassing. And it was just the poses were what we did physically. And so it was like we could include our bodies and our minds on uh, opening up and uh, being um, in a good, good state of mind. Great, thank you. Perfect, Jim. Yeah, I think uh, my journey in yoga started out as a physical one. Um, I think I was around age 50 when I uh, started taking yoga classes at my local health club. At the suggestion of my wife, um, I was constantly injuring myself uh, on, on the weight machines at the health club. Um, and so, and also uh, I have to confess that um, uh, my, my interest in yoga was to get in shape um, to, uh, I was starting to pole vault again as a master athlete. Uh, uh, a buddy of mine from uh, high school and college, we were both pole vaulters. Um, and we started pole vaulting uh, in our late 40s, early 50s um, as uh, master athletes. And uh, so I, I was really using yoga at the time mm. to get in shape to uh, pole vault. Um, but what I experienced was um, a deepening, uh, I, I guess, a transition from uh, seeing my ego in that I was really trying to get, like, really nail the postures. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, over time, uh, uh, there was a physical change in my body that allowed me to sit in meditation uh, for longer periods of time, because I also had, you know, a spiritual practice, um, uh, but I really never uh, sat in meditation until around 2003, uh, uh, which is about when I started my yoga practice. Um, uh, I had attended uh, a Richard Rohr conference out in Albuquerque called uh, uh, "Why from Why from." Uh, um, oh, wild man to wise man. Um, and I came home from that conference with a sense, a new sense of praying and sitting in what Richard Rohr calls contemplation. Um, and I started my, my meditation practice with lots of bells and whistles, you know, lighting candles and uh, 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 playing music. And over time, uh, that has evolved into my sitting practice today, which is just sitting in darkness and total 
uh, quiet. Um, but the, my yoga practice has made it possible, physically possible, for me to sit uh, in, uh, you know, cross-legged, uh, erect posture, um, sitting on the floor and meditate for uh, a period of time, 20, 30 minutes. I couldn't physically do that uh, without the practice of yoga. Um, so it really has evolved from my ego sort of into you know, my uh, true self, being able to sit for you know, at least moments uh, to connect at a deeper level with who I really am at the core, you know, with that divine spark within. Um, so yes, it, 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 it has evolved into a very spiritual practice and experience for me. And now I'm looking forward to somehow move it from an interior experience out into the world somehow. Not sure how to do that, but uh, I'm feeling that uh, call to, to do that. Um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll throw my two cents in and, and I'd like to maybe read a short note. So for me, uh, it was all about the physical piece of it. I, I had chronic back problems. Um, at the time I was headed for surgery and, and Jim, Jim and I used to work together. We worked for a medical device company that happened to make spine surgical products. So I wasn't too excited to be, to become a customer of our company. Um, <laughs> So I started yoga um, uh, for my chronic, chronic back problems. And, and uh, it turned out it, it, it provided amazing relief over time. So I never had surgery and I realized uh, that my problems were not so much physical, but it were stress related. Uh, and, um, but what I also realized it was that yoga was the gateway to other things. For me, it was the, it was the entree into the deeper aspects of, because I didn't have a meditation practice prior to then. I did get into meditation. I did get into uh, deeper spirituality. And uh, so I'm very thankful for yoga being uh, a gateway for me to the other aspects of that. But what, but what I want to do is, <clears throat> is maybe uh, share a note from uh, one of our students, and I won't name him to just to, to maintain uh, his privacy, but he wrote uh, really an amazing uh, letter or journals to us. And I just, if I can share an excerpt of that. Um, so, so I always figured yoga was for women and small, skinny, shirtless men from India. I was wrong. I took one yoga class 30 days ago with the intention of getting a good stretch and giving it a shot before I went back to my closed minded opinion of what, it, of what it was and what I, and what I received was far greater than my expectations. I felt peace. I felt connection and purpose. It was as if all the false identities I've built over the course of a lifetime were peeling away layer by layer. But most importantly, I've seen a crack in those walls I, I built so long ago, and a glimmer, a shadow of light was glowing around the surface of that wall. Mm. For someone who has lived with darkness for so long, sometimes you just want some light. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and get all super spiritual with you, as I don't know anything beyond what I feel. I'm not a monk or a Buddha. I'm just an average guy in the worst pain of my life. I've only known mistake after mistake, but having done this yoga for the past 30 days, I came to realize that I'm not the only one who's had to build up walls during my life. And while those walls may keep others from hurting me, they also keep others from seeing the good I know is somewhere within me. Whatever is happening within me, I don't want it to stop. Now, I'm not the same person I was when I started this course. Although I still have the small moments of being an asshole, uh, I no longer feel empty and lacking. I believe I found what I've been searching for. I just find that so inspiring. I'll turn it back to you, Jim. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to give all of us a, just a, a moment to respond to that. I mean, that I think that captures um, so much of what I've experienced through my uh, prison yoga experience is that um, the depth of each individual person um, and that they're all <laughs> amazing human beings. Um, that's what stands out for me. Mm -hmm. If anybody else wants to respond to that, but before we uh, bring our time to a close. Mike, that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful letter, Mike. And, um, I, I bet you read that more than once because in there is, is so much 
so much is in that letter. And I think our, what we all strive for is um, self-acceptance, self-love, so that we can share that with the people in our lives and beyond our lives, into our communities, into our friendships. And um, when you have peace within yourself and love within yourself, you never lose the hope that this life offers. And I think the sad part today is that so many people lose hope in life. They lose hope in themselves and then they lose hope in life. And therefore we are in a, a sad state of affairs in many cases. But there is still that hope that makes all of us worthwhile and loving men and women. And I think that letter really expresses that beautifully. Thanks, Frank. Any other comments before we close? All right, so we're, we're gonna bring uh, our time together to a close. Um, sit here with our eyes closed. <clears throat> I'd like you to imagine that all of us are standing shoulder to shoulder around this candle. bringing our collective life experience together, rubbing shoulder to shoulder, feeling each other's energy. And I invite any man to speak a word or two as a departing closing statement, totally optional, you don't have to say anything. And then we'll virtually close our meeting by leaving the meeting one by one. I may invite each individual to leave. So I'll offer any final word or statement to close ourselves out. Gratitude. Peace. Open heartedness. I want to thank each of you men, Frank, Matt, and Mike for showing up, not just here, but for showing up in a powerful way in my life and in your own life. Your presence has made a difference in the lives of so many men. My blessings as you depart. <clears throat>